Come, let us worship God. We worship the Lord God. We serve the Lord God. Who is the only one we need to save. He is the Alpha and Omega. Come, let us call on his name. We call on the name of God, who is Lord of all, and who saves us. God bless you this morning. Amen. Let us pray. God of strength and compassion, you bring your people out of slavery, into the promised land of milk and honey. Help us to hear your words and see your works of freedom, so that we may speak and sing praise of your wonderful deeds in our lives. We ask this through our Savior and guide, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I will ask my brother Ben to come and do the reading of the word of God coming from the book of Luke chapter 4 verses 1 to 13. Luke chapter 4 verses 1 to 13. Thank you Lord and praise God this week for uh, another wonderful week and we ask that uh, you just keep looking towards God and sharing his love with family and friends and uh, yeah just just reflecting who he is through you it's uh, fantastic I also ask that uh, we've been talking about Ukraine this morning I ask that you just pray for uh, the people over there and the Russian people and the presidents and everything like that that God will be uh, in that situation and um, bring a, a quick resolution to whatever's going on so just keep them in your prayers and most importantly put it in God's hands but uh, this week we'll be talking uh, reading from Luke chapter 4 as Johnson mentioned uh, verses 1 to 13 Jesus full of the Holy Spirit left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil he ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I'll give you all their authority and splendor. It has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will be yours. Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the te temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, Throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard and guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to test. When the devil has finished all this tempting, he left him until the, an opportune time. Praise God. Another strong Bible verse and it's going to be a good message from Johnson, so bring open ears and uh, we'll get Reverend Johnson back. Thank you, Johnson. Thank you for the reading of the Word of God. And um, this morning I've decided to share with you on the theme, Preparation by Testing. Preparation by Testing. The Gospel lesson for the first Sunday in Lent each year tells the story of Christ's temptation in the desert. As we read a moment ago, three are highlighted. They are each strong, and every one of them is based on truth, which is a wonderful reminder about how the truth can be used for evil purposes. And they are each one a metaphor for the temptations that face Christ's church. I need to ask a question this morning. It's a question to which I think I know the answer, but still I need to ask. Do any of you ever feel tempted? 
How about the show of hands? Yes, 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 yes. I see that we have a lot of people being tempted these days. I don't think I will trespass into the question of what exactly tempted you. I will not ask you that one. You can keep that to yourself. But truthful, if we go deeply into this, it's a tough thing to consider, isn't it? Temptations is one of the most familiar experiences of a true child of God. But some seem to be tempted much more than others. That's what I know. And that's what happens sometimes. No one can escape temptation. Adam was tempted. Eva was tempted. Lucifer was tempted. Christ was tempted. So the Lord taught us to include this in our daily prayer. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So he was saying every day we need to pray and not forget to say, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For some Christians are greatly troubled because they are tempted and they are tempted for they think they must be wicked. To be tempted is not sin. Sin is yielding to temptation. We cannot stop birds from flying over our heads, but we can stop for them from nesting on our head. We cannot stop evil thoughts from passing through our minds, but we need not accept them or not dwell upon them. Someone asked a little girl what she did when temptations come. She replied, Temptations are like Satan knocking at my heart, and when I see him there, I tell Jesus to answer the door. <laughs> Isn't that a good one? You are saying not me to answer the door, and when Jesus answers the door, the devil will say wrong number <laughs> because he's not expecting to see Jesus. Satan flees when the mind conquering Jesus appears and speaks of Calvary. James 1 verse 12 says, Blessed is the one who endures trials because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. So, we have got their sources of temptations. Another thing that tempts me is procrastination. If I have a project or a thing that needs to get done, it's easy for me to delude myself into thinking that I can do it tomorrow. And then suddenly I realize that I will be pulling a cup of all nighters because I've given in to the temptation of something other than what I should have been doing. And of course, there are more serious temptations. There are temptations that push us now how honest we are. Temptations that test us to see how faithful we are to our spouses or our partners. Temptations that expose our willingness to throw a friend under the bus in order to save our own skin or ways to make ourselves look good. And of course, there are temptations around taxes and tithing, stealing, and more. The list is virtually endless, and it is turning in its variety and complexity. We live in a torrent of temptation, and our world doesn't help much. We are in it. There are temptations of the flesh. But each person is each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. That is what the Bible says. 1 John 2 verse 16 says, For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. Which means some of these things we follow, they come from the world. And friends, I don't need to tell you that the world is falling over to its collective commercial impulse to dangle things in front of us. You know, if you go on your gadgets, it could be your phone, your, 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 your laptop, your computer, there are things that just come being advertised for you. And uh, 
there is a temptation of buying things you don't even need because they are coming every day. You are being tempted as to go places where we should even go. Every day there are temptations to cheat, to lie, to seek revenge, and to manipulate systems in order to get what we think we deserve. It's like a vast sea in which we all swim, some better than others. So the world had less technology in Jesus' time, but that temptation was just as prevalent in him as it is for us today. It's the same. Think with me about this story. Jesus is tempted by his appetites. The devil says to him, go ahead, turn these stones into bread. That's a pretty amazing prospect and one of that could even appeal to our fused, feel good sense of things. And we know his response, don't we? One does not live by bread alone. That is what Jesus says. Then of course comes the lure of power. From the walls of government to the workings of the church, power attempts to seduce us. And men fell to this temptation. But Jesus resists to worship the Lord God and save him only. It's because of power. All the fighting that we are seeing across the world, everywhere, Russia, Ukraine, and everywhere, is power. Is power. And lastly, Jesus is tempted to test his own divinity by demonstrating immortality in a dramatic leap from the pinnacle of the temple. And still Jesus resists. Do not put the Lord your God to test. And even then, after this extreme enticement, the devil doesn't quit. You know, the devil does not quit. If you read the Bible on verse 13, it immediately goes away until an opportune time. He says the devil left him until an opportune time. So don't ever think for yourself that if you manage to conquer one temptation right now, the devil is gone forever. No, he's just waiting for an opportune time. It seems that the question before us isn't about whether or not we are tempted. The real question has to do with how we respond to temptation. How do we respond to temptation? It is our response to this that creates or destroys us as a people. It strikes me that there are the three basic ways to respond to temptation. Maybe you are saying, which are they? The first one is to simply give in to it all. <laughs> you just give in to temptation. I, I was uh, talking to someone who is a friend of mine. He says, oh, if temptation comes to me, oh, I will not hesitate. I will drink it like water. Which means... The person is saying, I'll give in to temptation. The language that accompanies this is familiar to us. We, well, everyone does it. So, I'm far not perfect. Or what I had just the other day, which goes something like this. Or if I don't do it, someone else will do it. <laughs> so everyone is doing it. And do it themselves. What difference does it make anyway? So, this is the first response you just give in to temptation. What would it take for you to sell out? What is there in life that would cause you to compromise your faith? That's another response. Whatever it is, sexual temptation, financial inducement, fear of alienating or offending someone, it will be placed in your path at some point. These things will be placed in your path at some point in your life. The enemy wants to destroy believers, at least neutralize them, through sin, shame, and guilt. The moment you participate on it, you lose the power and you become powerless. When that temptation rears its seductive head, do what Jesus did. Rely on the word of God and stand fast in your commitment to worship God and God alone above all else. No matter the cost or the sacrifice, no matter how appealing they come on, Believers dare not put anything or anyone in his place. Just say God first. Succumbing to temptation is an epidemic in our world. Think for a moment. Do you know someone who surrenders their integrity to temptation and is ready with a careful constructed defense that articulates why this is reasonable and acceptable? They've given in to temptation. Yes, I think 
we might indeed know a few people like that. But before we get to, to righteous here, let's hold the mirror up for a moment. When I mean hold the mirror, I'm saying about you. Look your, at yourself in the mirror. Have you also been tempted? In what ways have you and I allowed ourselves to float away on the current of temptation? Where and in what ways do we give ourselves and, and even a way to lower the expectation and questionable activities? I know this is difficult. You cannot say it to me. Yet this season of self-examination, such questions are important to pose. Such questions are important to pursue. Some of us have fallen to pleasure like Demas. In, X, uh, in 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 10. For Demas has forsaken me having loved this present world. Which means he, he, has, he has forsaken the preaching of the word of God. Following or pursuing pleasure. Someone has said, given it to, like, to power like Simon of Magus in Acts chapter 8, verse 18, 19. Give me this power also that anyone on whom I lay hands receive the Holy Spirit. So, money to get the power. He wanted money to get the power of the Holy Spirit to regain the community popularity and power that he once possessed. So you can see Simon of Magus is asking for the power. The second way of responding to temptation is accommodation. Accommodation. Accommodation is the submission to the notion that it's not really bad. <laughs> it's not really bad. It's okay. Ah, it's only for one day. I, think, I don't think I'll do it anymore. Or worse still is the toleration of genocidal hatred in the name of freedom of speech. This is the attitude that shrugs all shoulders saying, if you want to get along, you have to go along. If you want to get along, you have to go along. And this is what is happening. Giving into temptation to avoid conflict or to wiggle ourselves is a safe distance is wrong. Accommodation is a way of dealing with temptation and also allows us to become mired in the swamp of relativity. This is the process of refusing to take a stand and saying that all points of view are valid. Friends, let's be clear. If a given point of view leans into murdering war populations, it isn't a valid perspective to be discussed over a cup of tea. It's evil. And evil is evil. It's evil. The third way of dealing with temptation is the ways of Jesus. In the passage before us, the devil really puts it to him with some serious movies. This is where we see the matter of the master as a simple test. Resist the test. He is offered abundant food when he is famished from fasting. Remember, he has been fasting for 40 days and is now being given abundant of food. But you know what? I like this because Jesus, being Jesus, is able to say no. Political power is laid before him and the enticing power of his own equality with God. Remember, in Philippians 2, verse 6, he is equal with God. He did not consider this as something very important, knowing that he is equal with God. He is being said, if you bow down and I give you food, I will give you all this half of the land. Political power has been given to him. Here is our strength and consolation in the struggles we face hourly with temptation. In him there is no surrender or accommodation. In him, the devil is given no quarter. He is not giving the devil any chance. In him, there is no interior struggle with the tyranny of his desires. 1 Peter 2 verse 9. In him is a clear, simple refusal to give in to temptation. This does not simply imply that such resistance is easy or even cost-free. It takes strength to resist. It takes commitment and clarity to simply say no. 
No. No. So the good news is this, that Jesus isn't alone in this resistance. Join him are the likes of St. Francis of Assisi. The likes of other people we might know. Who surrender their tempting world of family to follow the voice of God. We may treat water in a sea of endless temptation. But we do so in the presence of the mighty cloud of witness. There are some who have done it. We take heart in the full humanity of Jesus. And the man frail. Imperfect people we have followed him. We take heart in the support of Christian community who in prayer, worship, and discipline help us to resist the flood waters of temptation that surround us. You know that there are some people who are already praying for us right now, who are interceding for us, who are praying for us. We take heart in the relationships we build together where we support one another in our shared and sacred resistance to the temptations of this world. We are accountable to other people how do we get victory over temptations? How do we get victory over temptations? Jesus was able to resist all of the devil's temptation because he not only knew scripture, but he also obeyed it. Ephesians 6 verse 17 says that God's word is a sword to use in spiritual combat. So we use the word of God to defeat the devil. We don't use the weapons we have in the world to defeat the devil. Knowing Bible verses is an important step in helping believers resist the devil's attack. But they also obey the Bible. Not that Satan knew the scriptures. He even caused the scriptures. But he failed to obey the scriptures. Knowing and obeying the Bible helps you follow God's desire rather than the devil's sin. So, by Christ interceding for us, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked you for you that he may sift you like wheat. But I prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. In Matthew 31 32. Isn't that great? By personal prayer, watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. We need to watch and pray so that we do not enter into temptation. We need to watch and pray. By fleeing, when I mean fleeing, we need to flee from the devil. The Bible says flee. Also youthful lust and pursue righteousness, faith and love. Peace with those who call on the Lord out of pure heart. 2 Timothy 2 verse 22. You know, avoid to pass not by it, turn from it and pass away. You know, if you know that your temptation is on maybe drinking or whatever, avoid the pub, visiting the pub. <laughs> because if you visit the pub frequently, then you end up doing it. So you need not to pass on it by it. And by resisting the devil, you flee from you. James 4 verse 7. You need to resist the devil. You need to tell the devil no. And the devil will resist from you. In conclusion, sisters and brothers, in this season of land, let us renew our resistance to the temptations around us. But let us also renew our commitment to resist the evil and oppression wherever we may find it to regain our stature as ones who will rise up with courage with the joy we have in our Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. Temptation are common to all people. Every Christian must expect to be tempted. Praise the Lord for the possibility of victory and bringing glory to his name. Beware of yielding to sin, to fall sin easily by the scars often remain. Be conscious of immediate restoration through confession, repentance, and the blood of Jesus Christ. 1 John verse 1 verse 9. So what am I saying? I'm saying whenever you have found that you are being tempted, or you are going through temptations, ask God to forgive you. Pray to God and ask for God's forgiveness if you have already entered into temptation. 
because the devil is there to use you and manipulate you. May God bless you from now and evermore. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful Father, we confess before you that we have sinned. We have been greedy for gain. Sometimes we have not shared our bread with others. We have been eager for power. And have sometimes we have not looked beyond it to ways we can help our neighbors. We have wanted your protection, yet have not hidden in you as our dwelling. We have yielded to temptation and forgotten your word. We have not resisted evil in the power of your spirit, yet we are the God of perfect forgiveness. And give us peace through the blood of Christ, which was shed for us. For his sake, grant us forgiveness and cleansing. It's time for amendment and the grace and comfort of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Brothers and sisters, I urge you and appeal to you we are living in difficult circumstances. We need your help and your support for the church to go on and the work of God to go on. Don't forget to offer your, your tithing, your thanksgiving offering to the work of God and just say thank you, God. I know that it might be difficult, but take time and think about it. Let us pray. Father, we pray to you, the Lord of abundance, the Lord who has everything. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you that you are in charge of everything. You are in control of our lives. Father, we thank you for all those who have been and who are still supporting the, the ministry of the kingdom of God. May you bless them, Father, as they bring their offerings so that the work of God will continue to reach a lot of people. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Bless this offering. Amen. Okay. Let us receive grace. God of plenty, be with us as we journey into the world. Sustain us that we may always walk in your way and follow your example of justice, peace, and love for all. We ask it this through your Son, who resisted the temptation of the world. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen. God bless you all from now and evermore. Amen.